And he goes on to say, when you become that way, therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That is when you will be great. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. So when you welcome that child, a little child with faith is just as much a believer as you. And when you welcome them, you are welcoming Christ. But look at six. There's always a big but. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin remembering that a little one can be a small child but also a baby Christian it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea I think he's taking it pretty seriously that doesn't sound like a slap on the wrist. He's not talking about a little stone. In the scripture, they describe this as actually a stone that would have to be drugged by a donkey. So it was a pretty big one, okay? So if you're going to lead a child astray, a baby Christian astray, it would be better for you to tie a giant rock around your neck and throw yourself into the sea. I think he's pretty serious. Like, it's a really bad idea for you to do this. So who are you to think you are greater or have more rights than these children? So my question today, I guess the point, is what are we doing for our children? Where are your priorities and responsibilities in regards to them? So of course, if we're talking about kids, the first place we always look are to the parents, right? They're the ones that gave birth to them, after all. So I thought I would give you a little insight as to how I was raised. Since we know if you look at, like, me, it, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, my parents had great respect for our individuality, our freedom, and personal desires as children. If I woke up and didn't feel like going to school, they wouldn't force me. They allowed me to practice my freedom. If I didn't want to bathe or brush my teeth, I didn't. If I didn't want to eat my vegetables, I didn't. I didn't like going to bed early, so I stayed up late. I didn't do any chores, never brushed my hair, didn't change my socks, and I couldn't stand the inconvenience of putting on the yogurt. It was really just better for them to allow me to make my own decisions. After all, they didn't want me to rebel because they forced me to get an education or practice good hygiene. That makes sense when you look at me now, right? <laughs> Doesn't that sound ridiculous? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Th that's not true, okay? It's not true. <laughs> Like the next age up was like 30 years older than us, 
We were still there. If the church was open, we were in it. If the church was closed, we were still in it. <laughs> and it wasn't just the things at the church. You have to understand that too. It has to come in your home. You can't expect everything to come from the church as well. Prayer happened in our home. Bible studies happened in our home. We see that getting the kids here is the responsibility of the parents, maybe sometimes the grandparents. But what about the rest of you? Are you off the hook when it comes to the scripture? Absolutely not. What is it that we are called to be here? Scripture says that we are called to be the family of God. And that's where I think our society has failed. Not just our society, but the church. The church as a whole. The church as a whole now just sees that we can't be in each other's business. We can't be a family of God because, oh, I don't want to interfere. But that's what Christ has called us to be. <coughs> My question to all of you today is, what are we showing these children that the family of God truly is? Do we as a family truly see these children as a blessing from God? And even more than a blessing, do you feel any sense of responsibility at all? You as the family of God have been entrusted with each one of these children, whether you like it or not. Do you see that? Whether you are related genetically or not, you are related to each one of these children through the blood of Christ. And he has trusted you with their spiritual well-being, so what are you going to do about it? But wait a minute, isn't that supposed to be your job? Because we just decided to start paying you. <laughs> so why would we give you money if you're not going to do something about it? <laughs> right? Well, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? I can be one person to these kids, and I will put my entire heart into each and every one of them, but it takes a lot more than just the witness of one person to show them Christ. So what are we showing them that the family of God is all about? What do they see when they look at their church? Do they know your name? Do you know their names? Do you notice if they're missing on a Sunday? Would they even be missed? Do they see hypocrites, gossipers, backbiting? Do they see our family centered in Christ? Do they see unconditional love, peace, patience, care? They see whatever it is that we hold highest in our lives. The priorities that you hold in your life will reflect the priorities that this family shares with these children. So I ask you today, what does your list of priorities look like? What is first? Work? Money? Status? Play? Material things? Where exactly does Christ fit into all of that? And where would you be in this scripture? Are you showing these children the importance of a life centered on Christ? Or are you showing them a life centered on yourself? If it is the latter, don't forget to hold your breath. Because that millstone is going to take you down pretty deep. So where are we as the family of Christ? Are we truly being a witness and example of Christ? Or are we all going down together? Let us pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for all of the children and all of the youth that you have blessed this church family with, that you have entrusted us with. Lord, I just pray that you would be with us as a family of God. I pray that you would fill this place with your spirit, Lord. I pray that you would bless all of these children, and I pray that you would bless us, that you would fill us with your spirit, that we might be a strong example to all of these children. Lord, I pray that you would be an example to everyone here.
that you might fill us with your spirit, that we might be a beacon shining in a, a dark, dark world. I pray that you would be with us and allow us just to continue to grow in your strength and in, in your spirit. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen.